Hello and welcome to the second part of UTT Soho Routers Features. In this video, I'll show you all the features on the UTT Soho Router. UTT Soho Routers now include AC650W and AC60. They have very good stability and wireless range. Also, they're very easy to configure. If we click the application menu in the navigation bar on the top right of the web GUI, we will find the menus listed on two pages here. Let's look at them one by one. The DHCP server can be enabled or disabled in the DHCP server menu. If we enable multiple DHCP pools, four different DHCP pools will be created for all the four SSID which belong to the 2.4G and 5G wireless. On the DDNS menu, we can configure DDNS provided by several DDNS providers such as NoIP and DYNDNS. The traffic menu allows us to monitor interface traffic status. The System Info menu shows information such as system time, serial number, and firmware version. On the Internet menu, we can configure three Internet connection types, Dynamic IP, Static IP, and PBPoE. Dynamic IP allows the router to obtain an IP address automatically from the ISP. Static IP needs to be provided by the ISP and configured on this page. To set up PPPoE connection, we need a pair of username and password which should come from the ISP. Next is the wireless menu. There are 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz wireless. We can configure two SSID on both bands. SSID is the name of the wireless network, and of course, we need a pre-shared key, also known as password, for our wireless network. The 5G Hz settings are similar to that of the 2.4G. Next, on the LAN menu, we can configure the LAN IP address of the router. The default LAN IP address is 192.168.1.1. If we check the Conflict Detect and Repair option, the router will automatically change the LAN IP address to 10.10.10.1 if its primary router already has 192.168.1.1. On the next menu, we can configure static routes. Then, on the UPnP page, we can enable or disable UPnP feature which is required by some devices or services. On the bandwidth control page, we can manage bandwidths based on MAC addresses or IP addresses. Next is the parental control menu. It allows us to configure parents' devices and children devices. In this way, we can allow the children to only access specific websites during a certain time range of the day. On the MAC Filter menu, whitelist or blacklist can be created based on MAC addresses. On the virtual server menu, we can configure port forwarding rules. Next is the DMZ host menu, on which we can configure a host as the DMZ server. This DMZ server will open all its ports to the WAN side. On the user status page, we can find user information such as IP address, MAC address, current traffic, and so on. Then, on the system status page, we can monitor system information such as system time, wireless configuration, and internet parameters. Next is the Wi-Fi Auto On Off menu. On this page, a schedule can be configured for the Wi-Fi to be on or off. On the Time menu, the System Time, Time Zone, SNTP Server can be configured. 
Next is the Remote Management menu. If we enable Remote Management, we will be able to access the web GUI of the router from the Internet. On the password page, we can change the login password of the router. On the firmware menu, we can check the firmware version or upgrade the firmware. On the configuration menu, we can back up the current configuration, import configuration from the config file, or reset the router to factory default settings. Next is the diagnosis page. We can run pin tests to check the network status. Next is flexible bandwidth. Enable this feature, set the bandwidth provided by the ISP. Then the router will assign bandwidth to all the LAN hosts automatically. Next is Easy Surfing, also known as Plug and Play. With this feature enabled, we can use our laptop or PC to access the internet through the router. Even the laptop or PC is configured with an IP address that is not in the router's LAN. Next is Cloud Storage. If we plug a USB storage device into the router and enable cloud storage here, we can access the files through LAN or WAN side with our devices such as laptops. On the IP MAC binding page, we can bind the IP address and MAC address of a device so that every time this device connects to the router, it will obtain the same IP address. On the VPN menu, we can configure PBTP or L2TP VPN client. If we wish to connect to a VPN server with this router, enter the VPN server address, username, password, and select global mode in advanced options. Click Save. Then we can click Dire to connect to the VPN server. Once connected, all the traffic will go through the VPN connection. At last is the access control menu. If we enable it and enter an IP address range here, only the devices with these IP addresses will be able to access the router's web GUI and manage this router. That is all for the features of UTT Soho routers. For more information, please feel free to go to www.utdglobal.com, which is our official website. We can click Support, Download Sender, then click Menu, and find the Soho Wireless Router User Menu if there is any question related to configuring the router. As always, you can contact us by sending an email to support at utdglobal.com. I hope this video is informative to you and I'd like to thank you for watching.